seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. strong and the very courageous and mama and I are always yeah. thankful every week when you join us on the Sabbath day remembering to keep it kadosh amen oh, and amen and it's always a delight for us to hang out with all of you here on the chat so thankful for all of you who found your way to our channel and I tell you that's not as easy as it sounds uh, we are opposed by uh, forces of darkness that do not want you set free. We have enemies out there that are doing everything they can to prevent you from getting this word. And yet, you still arrived. You still made it. You still got here. Yes, I'm even with all that opposition, even with all the enemy forces arrayed against you, even with the will of the devil being your ignorance and blindness, yet here you are. And the Elohim of all creation has drawn you by his Ruach that you may have life and that more abundantly. And today we're going to be talking about the Torah of the Ruach of life in Mashiach Yahusha. And I want to encourage all of you to invite your friends and share this because we all need to be walking in this life. Speaking of which, I want to encourage you to join us tomorrow night for yet another great discussion with our brother Jarael Tomah always a great time as we sit down and get into the issues of life and death that we may have life and death more abundantly amen and amen you know that that is the will of our king he said that he came that we might have life and that more abundantly so we know it is his will for us to have an abundant life a life filled with good things that the joy of yahuwah would be our strength amen and many of the things that the world chases after, uh, many things that we people have been, maybe you were one of those tricked into, were you tricked? Were you tricked? <laughs> Some of you got tricked. I tell you what, we all did a little bit right. chasing okay. after things of the world only to find yeah. out how vain they are, yeah. how useless it is, and really how even, even traveling, even doing things without context, without people, without richness of life, all of it is empty and vain. And there are so many out there right now that chased after the dollar, chased after gold and silver, chased after mammon, and now they have nothing. They have stuff. Uh, you can't be so poor, but that all you have is mammon. Uh, that is a horrible state to find yourself in the last days. And there are those that still believe in it. They still are chasing hard after it. They never got the memo. They think that's the answer to happiness. And uh, they're stepping on people on the way. Right, they're ruining the actual happiness they could have in pursuit of what they thought was, and so this is what our enemy's enemy is working hard to take from us. But how many know that what the what he is trying to destroy when the enemy comes in like a flood, the ruach of Elohim lifts up a standard against him, mm -hmm. and so we know that we're living in the days where the standard of the the Torah, the the commandments of Elohim, are being lifted up against the ways of the enemy. And he promised them liberty, didn't he? He promised them freedom. He promised them happiness. He promised them joy and all kinds of fun. How's that turning out? Yeah, it's not turning out so great. A lot of misery, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness, a lot of death, mourning and famine and utter burning with fire is their end result. 
And so it was a trick from the beginning, always was. And now what he is drawing you toward, um, of course, is the Torah of the Ruach of life in Mashiach Yahusha. Okay, so the Torah of the Ruach of life in Mashiach Yahusha. And this is what we want to talk about today. Because I believe that many, many people have gotten tricked into, face, into chasing after other spirits and other things rather than the Torah of life, rather than the word of life that delivers you from destruction. And so this is an important word that I believe no matter who you are, where you're coming from, what part of churchianity you grew up in, what part of what mess you were in, doesn't matter. He is always in the same place, drawing those from death Onto life, and so to us is given the ministry of reconciliation, so we can reconcile the things that we hear to the things that were written, to reconcile these things unto Elohim, to reconcile people to Elohim, amen. So that people who are in out of good standing, who are in uh, condemnation, who are in destruction, they are they are bent toward destruction, that we can move them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. This is what this entire effort is all about. Gathering the remnant, the true, the genuine, the authentic, those who actually love him, though they may have error, though they may have mistakes, though they may have things that they do not know, their heart toward him is pure. That's who Amen. we're after. Amen. Amen. Their heart toward him is righteous as Zadok. That's who we're after. Not those that are looking to make excuses or come up with clever um, witty, wicked twists of scripture to get out of obligation and to get out of being found faithful. No, we're not looking for those. We're not looking for people that are looking to cut the corners. Come on, somebody. Right. It's just like an employer. You know, when you're trying to employ, you're not looking for somebody that's just going to rip you off, cut the corners on breaks, and never do the job you're, you're asking them to do. No employer goes out in the market looking for that. They're always looking for that employee, that person that's going to show up on time, deliver good work, finish what you said, and be an excellent example to the others that are there. This is, this is a common sense thing in our world, and yet we don't think twice about it in the kingdom. And we need to come in as a soldier, a dutiful soldier, willing to do the will of our Father, willing to execute His will, willing to finish and finish well so that it looks well done, not poorly done, not cheaply done, not if I feel like it, no, authentic and genuine is the call of the day. And that's who we're here for. That's who the remnant are. And so those that are imposters that are just wanting to come alongside, I never give them too much time or attention because they fall off. They fall away when they don't get the attention that they wanted right away. They have a very short fuse and a short attention span and so all we do is walk a while and we look again and notice they're gone because they weren't authentic. They weren't sincere. And those of you that are sincere, continue steady, steadfast, unmovable, unshakable. Every week, week in and week out, you just needed to be told the truth. You needed to be connected in. And now you are. And as a result, look at you. You're walking with your brethren. You're walking with your brothers and sisters in faith. It, which worketh by love. And so today we want to get into the Torah of the Spirit, the Ruach of life in Mashiach Yahusha. This is incredibly important because many times people coming out of the kingdom of darkness, they get caught up only in the rules of darkness and death, only in the rules of sin and death, only in that which brings about death. They're death obsessed. I mean, how many know you got to move your obsession from death Onto life. Somebody amen. say amen. You got to stop thinking about all the things that bring death, everything death related, thinking about curses and death and evil and wickedness. Spending all your time in this means that you still need to be delivered into the Torah of the Ruach of life in Mashiach Yahusha. Amen. amen. So we need to get our minds off of the violations that bring condemnation and instead begin to walk in the ways that are above reproach. Remember, that when you're filled with the Ruach, they're against such the fruit of that filling, against such there is no Torah. Right. And so if you're focusing on the things of the Ruach, you will be not be violating any portion of the Torah whatsoever at all, not even a little bit. This is why he declares that in Exodus chapter 20. 
we're going to get there real quick here. But turn with me in Deuteronomy chapter 30, because here Moshe is writing down and recording for us all of the children of Yisrael, generations removed from this, that they would hear the prophetic, accurate word of Yahuwah's servant, so that they would not think that they could get away with something that this generation couldn't get away with. Now you who have been given the Ruach have even a greater obligation because you have greater promises and you have the Ruach in, uh, in met living inside you. So what they had in lack, you have in abundance. Yes. Amen. So they are going to be given a fairer or, or, or less a lesser judgment than those who were given the Ruach to walk in, amen, and to guide through these days. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 30, we hear the prophetic word of the of the messenger of Yahuwah. And this is something that we cannot dismiss. I know churchianity has dismissed many, many teachers and preachers and pastors and ministers have gone out in the name of Mashiach and dismissed the messenger that Mashiach went on to the Mount of Transfiguration to confer with. And so it is disrespectful to Moshe uh, to not take seriously the words. These are the very words, is the very book that Mashiach quotes to the devil in the wilderness. So it, it, there can be no greater importance. And for this reason, he says that uh, you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven if you do and teach these things. So Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 16, in that I command thee this day, to love Yahuwah your Elohim and to walk in his uh, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live so you see that the, the conditions of living for life for that which is alive is being in agreement with the commandments statutes and judgments of Yahuwah so if you want to be fruitful and multiply, this is the remedy. And Yahuwah thy Elohim shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, watch this now, because this is what you've watched. Many of you have come out of this where your heart was turned away and Elohim softened your heart and drew your heart the other way back toward life, right? But if your heart be turned away so that thou will not hear, how many of you have met people that refuse to hear? No matter what you share with them, they won't listen. They won't hear. But so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods. So if you've been tricked into false names, into false worship, into false celebrations, these are all tricks meant by your enemy to contaminate you and serve them. He says, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. So what is the fate of those who refuse and rebel? They will perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over your den to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. So Moshe was giving them a choice back then. This is the good news, the exact same message that we get today. You either decide you're going to repent or you don't, okay? So the same message was preached in the Brit Hadashah, John the Baptist, and then Mashiach and the disciples, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he lays before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, what does he say to choose? Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So you see what happens when you choose life you and your seed live, that thou mayest love Yahuwah thy Elohim, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy what? Life. life. Okay? So once again, continue in the tie, obedience to life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahuwah swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Yaakov, to give them. Okay? And so he ties very early in. Um, we see this right in the beginning in the garden. If you obey the commandments, you live. You still have access to the tree of life. You can stay in the garden. You can be in this place of life. You've got no issues with Elohim. There is no strife. There is no division. There is no sin. But as soon as you violate the commandment, 
as soon as you no longer agree with Elohim, when you are no longer grateful for his protection, when you are no longer grateful for his provision, when you are no longer grateful for his set apart place, and you will touch that which is the cursed thing and go outside, then you are now moved to the other side. This is what happens when we disobey, okay? And so even then, the word of life was given to Adam. Adam was told, if you don't touch this tree, you'll be fine. If you touch that tree, you will surely die. You see, you got before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose wisely. And once again, he puts the same choice before Yahshadel. He says before them, choose wisely, choose life that thou and thy seed may live. And so this choosing to get life is part of the pattern that has been since the beginning and continues on to this day. We are the ones with the power to make a choice. This choice has to be authentic and genuine. And so the reason why we always have to look and be careful to know those we labor amongst is because many will say they made the choice for life, but their actions choose otherwise. The way in which they live their life reflects their actual choice, not the ones their mouth says they want to choose. Yeah. Amen? And so many times people will say the right words, but not be living the word. Amen? Don't just say the word, be a doer of the word. Amen? And so they're, then what are they attempting to do? Well, they're attempting to deceive the righteous. So they're not just not being set apart, but they're actually in an attempt to con or deceive and to bring deceit into the household of faith. This is how Ananias and Sapphira were caught. They were trying to deceive their way in. You can't do that. You have to be authentic and genuine. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 11, and verse 18, it says, the wicked worketh a deceitful work. So you see there, the wicked person thinks they're exempt. And what do they do? They work a deceitful work. They deceive people. They are not genuine in their effort. But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. And so you see the contrasting picture here between those who work wickedness or twistedness. They got it twisted, okay, versus the person that's doing it the right way loves correctly and they will have what is called a sure reward a sure reward as righteousness tended to life so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death okay to pursue evil is to pursue it to your own death so this is why you have to learn how to repent and be empowered by the ruach of life that you could stop chasing the things that when you pursue them, bring you to death. They that are of a froward heart are abomination to Yahuwah, but such are upright in their way are his delight. And so he does separate even back in the book of Proverbs, those who have a righteous heart toward him, who have a righteous Ruach, who want to do what is right, and they purpose and pursue life, not death. Amen? And so if you're not pursuing death, you're going to be in a different state than the person who's uh, that is. And a person that's pursuing death, how do we know? Because the, the works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh start to manifest through that person. So they are carnally minded. Even though they might know his name, even though they might wear a t-shirt or a hat, even though they might even show up for a meeting, we cannot be fooled by these outward appearance only. We have to see the authenticity. And that authenticity is going to manifest when that person's in a choice. Yeah. When they are given a choice. We see that he lays before you life and death. This is when we're going to see whether it's authentic. How do we know if Achan was a genuine son of Elohim or one trying to bring deceit? He put something in the middle of his tent and tried to hide it. This is deceiving right? That was not genuine. That's not authentic. That's not a real son. He had to be eliminated in order for the rest to remain pure. Do not underestimate the power of a little leaven that leavens the, the entire lump. Amen. All right. We saw one fallen angel take down a third. Mm -hmm. We saw, um, you know, very, very easily how that just those who are refusing to obey Elohim can affect an entire group of people. Yeah. Okay. And so this is why it is so important that we have no leaven in the lump, if you will. 
And so we have to be a people that are unafraid to hold the standard. And the wicked work of deceitful work. And so we have to be a sober people that know how to pick out that wickedness as it's trying to manifest in our midst. And if we move to the seventh slide, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13, take a look at this. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. And so we see these who refuse to hear the word of Elohim, refuse to obey him, want nothing to do with obedience, but they want life. This is, con this is contradictory. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. That is the word of Elohim. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. There we see that reward word again. So once again, we're talking about being rewarded. Rewarded with what? Life. With life. The Torah of the wise is a fountain of life. You see that? And so the Torah is connected to life. And to depart from the snares of death right so this is what it's for and that is the seventh slide and it says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard the way of the trans way of transgressors is hard okay and so we we see um, whoever despises the word whoever pushes away the word of all whoever says I don't want to listen to this anymore or that's old and it's gone now, okay? Such nonsense thinking. Even though Mashiach was very clear that he did not come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. Nevertheless, there's those that are, oh, you know, I don't have to listen to that anymore. Same thing they said in Noah's day. Same thing they said in each epoch. Oh, that's old stuff. That's old, thousands of years old already. Oh, okay, the truth got old. And this is how we end up in the situations that we do. All right, and so good understanding giveth favor. And so those who have good understanding, they are the ones operating under grace. It is not the disrespectful and, and those who deny his ways and refuse to listen to his Torah. That's the proud. He doesn't give grace to the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Amen. Amen. And so those presuming themselves, uh, who have no concern whatsoever for his ways, his Torah, his commandments, they don't have anything written in their heart and mind. Um, but they simply expect access. That's an entitlement mentality. This is narcissism. This is the worst kind of abusers you could run across. Okay, those who feel themselves entitled, despite the fact that they don't meet the minimum requirements, not even the minimum requirements that were asked of those who were sincere. And again, the sincere have no problems with those things. They're easy. They're light burdens. They're not grievous. But the insincere will find even the smallest obligation to be monumental. Pay attention. Even the smallest obligation will be blown out of proportion as if it is just asking an egregious thing. Whereas the humble will happily and lightly do that which Elohim calls for. This is why he says he loves the cheerful giver. He watches the countenance of the obedient. Not just that they obey, but how they obey and what countenance they use, right? This is why he speaks to Cain, and he says, why is thy countenance fallen? Okay? So even if you were to do right, that face you're walking around with is going to ruin it. Yeah. Amen. And so we need to be a people that do what is right and do it right and do it well as unto Elohim. In Proverbs 14 and verse 11, we see that the house of the wicked shall be overthrown. So what's going to happen to the house of the wicked? According to the scripture, all we have to do is wait because it will be overthrown. We don't have to do a thing because it's the house of the wicked. So it always will be overthrown. All we have to do is watch and see. Okay? But the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. So we can know the difference when we can see them. We know the difference between them, right? The house of the wicked will be overthrown. And there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so there are so many that believe in their own way. They've come up with their own religion, very much like Cain. They've come up with their own doctrines. And this is what I believe. And so that's it. They've settled the matter. They've not, they're not going to dig any further. They're not going to study any further to show themselves approved, a workman who need not be ashamed. When will they be ashamed? When they try to run their private, personal well, a personally crafted gets them between the raindrops doctrine that Elohim did not send. That's when they're going to be ashamed. 
Okay, they should have been rightly dividing the word of truth. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of the mirth is heaviness. The backslider in, in heart shall be filled with his own ways. You see this? What is it that they do? They fill themselves not with what they think is satanic or evil or wicked or witchcraft. No, they just come up with their own ways. No, this is the way I do it. Well, this is the way I decided. This is the, the scripture calls that person a backslider. A backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. So he will look at his own work and say, The might of mine hand hath gotten me this well. I'm blessed because of me, me, me. I'm doing good. I'm better than that guy and that guy. Therefore, I'm good, and I'm getting good things. And he satisfied himself. Okay? And the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. So what is the prudent man? He's a fact checker. He double checks. He triple checks. He's making sure. But the backslider is filled with his own ways. Doesn't bother. Doesn't care. Grabbed a piece here and a piece there. Jumbled it together at midnight and made up his own doctrine. This is what you're seeing out there in spades. In great numbers, more and more lacking wisdom. Instead of actually seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, they've gone about to make their own. They created their own. Uh, they took a verse out of this and a verse out of that, jumbled it together with a little bit of Pauline magic, and suddenly they are righteous. In fact, they're, they're the righteousness of Elohim and in everything they do. They got themselves worked around in their mind to believe that. And so this is part of the... Um, great falling away that started thousands of years ago it wasn't a new thing and it continued to build momentum until you see its full conclusion in the world today take a good look in Psalm 119 beginning in verse 104 this is right in the middle of your scripture Psalm 119 and he says in verse 104 through thy precepts I get understanding how do we get understanding through his precepts so if you throw away the precepts what don't you have understanding okay therefore I hate every false way thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and where's this path taking you to life I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep that I will keep thy righteous judgments judgments the judgments of Elohim this was always required never were we given a pass Never has it ever been declared from Genesis to Revelation that these things are passed away. In fact, the new covenant or the Brit of the Shah is the writing of these things in your heart and mind. That is what was prophesied by Jeremiah and confirmed in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 and chapter 10. <clears throat> and so we need to understand that he is expecting us to operate above reproach he says i have no greater joy third john verse four than to hear that my children walk in truth not do whatever they feel like right and so those who have manipulated the the, the commandments of elohim think that they have created for themselves a place of safety what they've in fact done is fallen for strong delusion amen and so let's get into this a little bit, because in Romans chapter 6, uh, the writer of Romans, Apostle Paul, is trying to give you an insight about the law of the, the Torah of the Ruach of Liberty. And the Torah of the Ruach of Liberty does not operate the way the world would describe it. So the world would hear the word liberty and freedom and think, all right, we get to do whatever we want. Right? Whatever we want with no repercussions. And we know from the natural world, just looking out there, that is just not true. You cannot just throw yourself off the top of a building and fly. You will die. Okay? You can't just do whatever you want. There are rules. All right? You can't steal, kill, and destroy. There will be consequences. You can't just do whatever you want to other people. There will be consequences. So this notion this concept that freedom or liberty means no restriction, means no governing principles whatsoever, that's just simply not true biblically 
or practically in our real world. All right. And so in Romans chapter 6 and verse 21, he is admonishing us about the way we lived our lives before we came into the kingdom. And a kingdom has rules. A kingdom is established by order. Amen. This is right. This is wrong. These are rules. Okay. And so uh, he is explaining to us that in the book of Romans, or he's saying, he's saying this in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 21, uh, he's making fun of the fruit. And many of you have all said the same things coming in like, I don't know what I was thinking. My life was going downhill fast. I was in, I was engulfing death and destruction. I was drinking death and eating destruction. I was killing myself, my family, everything, right? Romans 6, verse 21. What fruit had ye then in, these, in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death, which you would agree with. Uh, all these habits and things that you were doing, okay? But now being made free from sin. What are you free from? Sin. Not free to sin. Free from sin. Good point. Not free to sin. Okay? Look what he's saying here. Made free from sin and become servants to Elohim. No longer a servant of sin. Because when you were a servant of sin, you couldn't stop when you wanted to. Good point. Okay? Even when you knew what you were doing was wrong, you couldn't stop. You needed him to intervene. And you have your fruit unto holiness and to the end. The what? The end is everlasting life. The end of that holy walk. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Elohim is eternal life through Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adon, who was, of course, the obedient son. So, what example does he demonstrate? He demonstrates obedience to the commandments and therefore he walked in supernatural life this is why he was able to recover people that were sick this is why he was able to pray for the sick to pray against the demonic which were trying to bring them to death he was a hundred percent on the side of life amen some of us when we come out of the kingdom of darkness there are things that we have to be disciplined to let go of why because they're death there's ways that seem right unto a man. So there's some Egyptian or Babylonian things that we tend to want to bring because we don't know any better. And the Ruach of Emet, the Ruach of Truth, the Ruach of Life, has to instruct us on dropping things that don't belong in the kingdom of Elohim. This is not as easy as it sounds. This requires a humble heart that is willing to let go of those things which are contrary to to the judgments, statutes, and precepts now written in the heart. Amen? And so when that happens, all of a sudden you're going to have a problem with things that you just a week ago didn't have a problem with. Two weeks ago it was fine. Now it's suddenly a problem. Where did this come from? There's something different inside of you now. There's a new uh, a commandment in there, judgments and precepts that are now activated inside of you. So what you could do without anything bothering your conscience before, now your conscience is, is starting to get twinged and, and affected. And you're like, no, we can't, we can't do this. This isn't right. This is incorrect. This is not what the Torah says. Okay, we see it happen to children. We see it happen to adults all across the spectrum. As soon as they start getting the Ruach of Yahuwah, all of a sudden they have to live accordingly. Okay? This means that you are being freed from the power of sin. The very fact that you even think the thought that you didn't used to think, that never even came into your mind, but now it comes into your mind. That is you being freed from the power of sin. You're literally watching the process. You caught the process in operation, whereas before you would, without even thinking about it, go toward that thing. Now, there's a stop in there. There's a check. There's something saying, oh, no, don't do that. What is that trying to do? It's leading you into life. This is the guide of life known as the Ruach of Yahuwah, yeah. guiding you into life. There was another spirit, a bunch of them, leading you in a different direction, into death, encouraging you to go into death, encouraging you to kill yourself, encouraging you to do those things which would steal from your life, 
knowing full well, but they're the spirits of death guiding you toward death. This is why you need the Ruach of life, the Ruach Emet, the Ruach of Elohim, to lead you into all truth. Right? So what did he say? He would send you a comforter, and he will lead you into all truth. Things that he couldn't explain, you would later get by the Ruach of Yahuwah. Amen? And so in Romans chapter 8, in verse 1, we see the manifestation of this truth here in this passage. Romans 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in, pay attention, Mashiach Yahusha. Not an imposter, not a fake. You can't replace this. You can't say whatever you feel like. You have to say Mashiach Yahusha, because that's the only name under heaven whereby men must be saved. And it is not a generic term like Christ, which is applied to dozens of others, but Mashiach, which is only for one, who walk not after the flesh, so they don't walk after nor pursue nor manifest the works of the flesh, but after the Ruach. Aha! So this no condemnation declaration is for those walking after the Ruach, not just those with a label Amen. or a t-shirt, okay? Or a, a membership card. For the Torah of the Ruach of life in Mashiach Yahusha hath made me free, watch this now, from the Torah of sin and death. For what the Torah could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, Elohim, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the Torah might be fulfilled in us. What's this? that the righteousness of the Torah might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Ruach, the things of the Ruach. And so we know that those that are uh, translated out of the kingdom of darkness are no longer putting their minds on contemplating and trying to acquire or achieve things of the flesh, which are manifest and written in the book of Galatians. Instead, their pursuit and thoughts are things of the spirit, the things of the Ruach, the things that preserve life, that bless, that encourage. Against such there is no Torah. Okay? So you're free from the Torah of death. Now what is that? That is the Torah that declares that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim, pronouncing death on those who refuse to hear the Torah, hear the commandments, hear the Ruach, and translate out of the kingdom of darkness. They refuse. They want to stay over there. They want the benefits of life. They just don't want to move. Okay? Yeah. That is not going to work. We already see that repeated in the scripture repeatedly. No, no questions about it. Nevertheless, they've come up with doctrines, ideas, theologies, whatever you want to call it, to justify this very thing that Yahuwah throughout the scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation continues to condemn. Okay? And so those that want to play it fast and loose, uh, they're risking their eternal soul. And not only do they risk their own internal eternal soul, but they will risk the souls of everyone around them on this bet, on this hunch, on this hope that they can pull it off and have all these compromises and still be accepted. Yeah. Okay? That is that is crazy talk. Um, that's like saying we're, we're all taking the whole team down to the ball game. Do you have tickets? No, no, we don't have any tickets, but I'm counting on them just letting us in. Right. That's a good point. <clears throat> Let me see if I have this right. You don't have any tickets? You didn't make any reservations? You know the right way to do this is to get tickets. Yeah, I know, but the owner's a really good guy. He's a really nice guy. And, and uh, you know, he's done other nice things before. I'm sure he's going to let us in. That's your plan. That's the plan of those who refuse to obey the word of Elohim. Um, they continue to make presumption. Uh, and this is, this is what he told us would occur. He said, they'll come up to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy, cast out devils, 
and do many, many great and mighty works in thy name. And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, which means you worked against the Torah. You worked against the commandments. You worked and taught and did against the ways of Elohim. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. None of those other things matter. So that tells you right there, those are not the most important things. The most important things is obedience. Amen? And so an obedient, humble heart, whom Elohim can see humility in, these are they who pursue the things of the Ruach. So they're following the guide of the life, the spirit of life in Mashiach, Yahusha. So what does he teach? He teaches you how to walk in such a way that these things come forth from you. Whereas when you're walking in the Torah of death, these things are things you think about from the outside in. Whereas from the inside out is the way the Ruach of life moves and you don't even notice that you're fulfilling these things, that you're keeping these commandments. And so when he says in Exodus 20, they shall not, that, that he says, uh, 10 thou shalt not, he's not just declaring a rule from the outside, which the carnal man would find a very difficult stone to live. What he's describing is what it looks like when his children are filled with his ruah. And when they are, they do these things. They are faithful to Yahuwah. They are not faithful to any other. Okay? They will not bow down to idols because they have in them a love for Yahuwah and they instinctively know not to do that. Right. All right? They do not take the name of Yahuwah Sebaot in any form of vanity. This is just the way they function. They won't do that. It just doesn't come out of them. All right? They remember the Sabbath day. And they keep it holy. This is just prophesied. He's declaring ahead of time. Those of you that have seen them, you go, wow, he called it before they came. Yes, they will honor their father and their mother. It will come forth naturally from them to be respectful, to honor, even though they may not agree with them on certain things. Because sometimes parents don't get it right. Nevertheless, they are respectful and they honor their father and their mother. All right? They do not commit murder against their brother, neither physical or in any other way. They do not commit adultery. They're not interested in being in an adulterous type of relationship. This doesn't attract them. It's not something of interest to them. It's not something they would pursue. Okay? Um, so, so you won't see them functioning in adultery, just not spiritually, not physically, and in no way, because this is the way that the Ruach led them. They will not be thieves. So this is something you will notice that they just, if they used to be, they're not anymore. Now they're hyper honest about these things. I mean, to the nth degree honest, and they will not steal from anyone. Uh, if something doesn't go the way it's supposed to, then they'll return the money. Um, and they, they, they don't steal from each other. This is a beautiful thing that only comes by the Ruach. Amen. They will not bear false witness against their brethren. They just simply won't do it. Um, they won't get up in front of the congregation and tell spin stories and spin lies. We've seen people that do that. So if they can do that, what don't they have? They don't have the Ruach of Elohim. Okay, that is evident by the way they're conducting themselves. And finally, they will have no covetous heart. They will not covet that which belongs to their neighbor or that which belongs to their, their friend, their brother, their sister. Um, they will not covet those things. They will instead uh, bless them and be grateful for them and be happy for them that they have them. Uh, and so they will be content with what they have. And this is a very different heart. This doesn't mean that there still isn't temptation. This doesn't mean that there still isn't battles. This doesn't mean that there still aren't struggles. But this is just not the way they live their lives. They don't live their lives in a, in a violation of the commandments of the king. They simply just don't do that. It's not about religion. It just is the way they function. They were changed from the inside out. And if that isn't you, then you need to repent. Cry out to Elohim that he would change you. Because unless he builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. And so uh, so they uh, that are after the flesh, they mind. Their mind is on the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they do mind the things that be of the Ruach. And as Apostle John uh, makes clear to us, that we are going to be hated 
uh, and you're going to be hated because of your walk of life, because you are not walking by the guide of the spirit of death, the spirits of destruction that lead people into destruction. You're not living by that. You're living by the opposite. You're living by the Ruach of life, the Ruach of Emet, the Ruach of Elohim. And because of that, all your choices are different. Every way in which you think, all of your decision making, all of it is different. And as a result, your, your results are going to be different. What do you think they're going to hate? They're going to hate the fact that you operate in his name. They're going to hate your results. They're going to hate the miracles. They're going to hate the healings. They're going to hate all the things that are manifesting in your life. For this reason, we need to be with our brothers and sisters. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 13, he says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death onto life. Okay, watch this. So if you're wondering, hey, have I, if I moved over, am I completely moved over from the death follow, from the death march, from following the spirit of this world, the spirit of the age, into hell, have I been delivered from that? We know that we have passed from death unto life because why? We love the brethren. Aha. So this is the check mark. This is the checkpoint. This is the part you've got to have correct, right? He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So if you got zero love in your heart for your brother, you still want to be saved. You want to be saved. You definitely want to be saved. But you don't have any love for your brother. And you might say those words, but if we look carefully, we won't see actions that reflect love for your fellow brothers and sisters. If that is not there, then you have not moved. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how much you've learned, parroted, memorized, all that, none of it matters. According to the apostle, this is the way we know that you've moved from death onto life. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So it doesn't matter that you've not actually physically done anything to them. Just the fact that you hate them, that you're a hater, that you drink the hater aid. Okay, if you're a hater, then you have no life abiding in you. And you know that no murderer hath the eternal life abiding in him. Okay, so if you have hatred toward your brother, you are, the, this is who this is for. Hereby perceive we the love of Elohim, because he laid down his life for us. See how that works? This is how you know the love of Elohim is in someone because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And so this is something that cannot be faked. This is one of those things where you have to see it in situation. We got to see them, don't we, mama? We've got to wait until there's a situation where they got to choose to preserve their life or preserve the life of their brethren. Yes. They got to choose between what's in their best interest and what's in the best interest of the, of the household of faith, right? Yes. They've got to They've got to make these choices. And when they make a choice for life, we know it and we can see it. And we can see the battle and we can see which one won the battle. Okay? There was a fight. And we're going to watch and see who, who's going to win this fight. Oh, look at that. The Ruach of Elohim has won the day, has convinced the brother or the sister that it was far wiser to care for her brother or her sister than to care only for themselves. Something happened. Something huge has occurred. What has occurred? This person moved from the, from the pathway that leads to death and destruction and moved to the narrow road which leads onto life. And how do we know that? Because they have love for their brethren. Notice it doesn't say love of Elohim. Because I can't, and, and this is so wise, the apostle knew this. People will declare their love for Elohim like through the roof. Oh, we love Elohim. The Pharisees would tell you they love Elohim. They did not love their brethren. And this was the tell that you knew they were faking it. They didn't love Elohim either. How can you say you love Elohim and you don't love those who are made in his image and after his likeness? Mm, good point. Okay? I mean, I could get mad at that little boy, but he looks just like mama. So I have to love <laughs> I got to love him. He looks just like mom. I mean, what am I going to do? Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay and you look just like your papa and so what they gonna hate you but tell you that they love your father you know that's crazy you know that doesn't make any sense and that's exactly what you'll be hearing out there from those who pretend those who have pretense in their heart
okay? And again, they have good reason to want to pretend. I mean, you're going to get good stuff. You're going to get rewarded. You're the authentic. You're the genuine. You're the real article. You're the real thing. All right? They envy you. They wish they were you. They want your heart. They want to be like you. They want to make decisions like you make them. They want to make choices that later on they go, man, that was wise. Boy, I, I, I didn't see it when you made the choice, but boy, I can sure see it now. That was really well decided because you were caring for your brother or caring for your sister more than yourself. And then later on, Elohim calls it to come back, blessed, shaken together, running over, and then gave into your bosom. Why? Because you're faithful. You're faithful and make sure your brothers and sisters are okay, right? And so then those who are outside go, oh, I should have gone that way. Oh, I should have done that. But they're not learning from within like you. They're learning by watching you. That's not the same. Yes, that's true. They're still learning from the outside. Okay? When these things only come from the inside, they have to be motivated from within your heart. You have to look at your brother and, and compassion to fill your soul. You got to say, oh, okay, let me see. Let me see what I can do here. Let me see how I can be a blessing. If that doesn't come to your heart, if those are the kinds of things you don't think those types of thoughts, you're like, what's his problem? Why doesn't he get his act together? And you have no love whatsoever for the for the hurt man on the side of the road, then you're not in league with a good Samaritan. Right. You're not united. You're somewhere else. You have a different spirit leading and guiding you on your path of success. Okay? And so this is when, you know, you see the genuine thing coming into people's hearts and you know it's real. And how do you know it's real? The apostle tells us when they have love one for another. This cannot be faked. They might, they might try and smile their way through it. But I mean, no, love has many faces. Some of those faces are not smiles. Sometimes love has to tell you the truth in a not-so-smiley way. But love, nevertheless, will be there to go with you through whatever your difficulty is. Amen. So not just come to drop you bad news, but come to tell you the good news that they'll go with you. Amen. To fix or remedy whatever that problem is. And so I believe Elohim is now drawing out his truly chosen, his truly blessed, his true and authentic vessels who love him, who are sincere, who are in fact free from the power of sin. They're free from the crushing, debilitating power of the enemy. They are no longer slaves to do whatever the devil wants them to do. Now they serve Mashiach with their whole heart. Look at somebody and say, I serve Mashiach. I serve Mashiach. Amen. Amen. And so you're not falling for the tricks of the devil anymore. You're not going down to be his drug dealer. You're not there to be his pimp. You're not there to lie to people and sell them false things or false hope. You're not there to be part of their swindle or scam. You're no longer participating in wickedness and evil, in poisoning people, in destroying lives in participating in wickedness. No, you've departed from these things. You've disconnected. You're now reconnecting in new ways that he's leading you so that you don't have that which offends your Ruach. That's not a small transition. If you think it's a light matter, you don't get it. This is not stay in Babylon and just bow your head and say a prayer. This is come out of her, my people. Come all the way out fully and completely. And those that get this, they end up with a blessing and if we look at Revelation chapter 22, I love looking at this portion of scripture because how many know that we need to keep the end in our mind? We need to remember where we're headed in, that he is taking us, drawing us toward an end, okay? Toward a, a good end. In Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16, I, Yahusha, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the assemblies. I am the root an offspring of David, and the bright and morning star, and the Ruach and the bride say, Come, and let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that is athirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, Elohim shall add unto him the plagues, that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this of the book of this prophecy, Elohim shall take away his part out of the book of life 
and out of the Kadosh city and from the things which are written in this book. So, do we tamper with it? No. Do we touch it? No. We, we just obey. We just believe and obey. And not everybody can do that because some people are like, I'm sorry, I just can't do that. I can't just believe. I need to be convinced. And that person, unfortunately, will go all the way until the judgment day. And then and only then will they say, now I am fully convinced. Yes, but that's not faith. Okay, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Once you see it, once it's manifested in front of you, faith is no longer required. Now it's judgment time. Now it's judgment time. And so we are uh, uh, given an opportunity, a doorway, a pathway, a narrow road that requires we operate by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. You can't skip the faith part, okay? Through faith, it is the gift of Elohim, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so this faith, which worketh by love, comes from knowing the character of Elohim. The only way you're going to get to know his character is to study his word. Amen. Amen. The more you study his word, the more you study his character, the more you get to know him, the more it becomes real to you. Okay? And so it's not some religious thing you pick up in a book. And it's certainly not somebody standing there with a with a, you know, the old old uh, teachers with the ruler ready to spank you if you do something wrong. No. The ruach of Yahuwah makes you free as you obey. You don't obey to become free. You are freed by Mashiach and you are being taught how to walk in your freedom so that you're not re-entangled in the yoke of bondage. Okay, so once he sets you free, he wants you to keep your freedom. So he has to teach you the law of liberty, how to stay out of the devil's grip. So as you learn the commandments, you go, wow, that's how he got me last time. I didn't even know that was a commandment. Yeah, that's a commandment. Wow, I'm never doing that again. I know what that dungeon feels like. Now you know. Now you have a real application for that Torah principle. Whereas if you're just listening to what you thought is religious or just rules, just for rules that have no context, then you're likely to fall into the same mistake that Adam and Eve fell into. Where you have to go through a process of learning just how wicked sin really is. And so for those of you that are praying for your brothers and sisters, just continue to pray for Elohim to make the Torah live in their heart and in their mind. That they would no longer fight against him, but instead begin to embrace the things that he's been speaking, the same, same, same things for thousands of years. And that they would finally start to agree with him. And once they do, you won't have to motivate them. You won't have to encourage them. You won't have to talk to them. You won't have to tell them anything. Because they will themselves say, oh, no, I'm not playing with this. Mm -mm. That's how you know it's real. It's not coming from the outside where somebody's telling them what to do. It's coming from within, where they have read it for themselves and this, I can't believe, why didn't anybody tell me this? And they're going to be upset. Maybe you're, maybe you're one of those people that got really mad when you found out <laughs> some things. You're like, why would those wicked people do? Because they're wicked. You just said it, because they're wicked. And because of their wickedness, they led others into wickedness. They lead others into their own destruction. They are the blind and they lead the blind and both fall into ditches. So this is all the more reason for your eyes to be fully open, for you to be awake, for you to be able to see the law of liberty that is in the Shia, Yahusha. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every one of these, my brothers and sisters. I thank you that they are being set free from the power of sin, that sin is losing its grip daily on their lives, that they're being more and more uh, a conqueror in Mashiach Yahusha, to conquer the power of sin, the attraction of sin, the, the draw away into uh, a behavior that is contrary to your word. And I thank you, Father, that you deliver them that you give them strength and courage to face whatever it is that's trying to put them in slavery. And we thank you that you, by your Ruach, lead and guide us into truth, that we would be a people that walk upright before you to bring pleasure to your name. That as you look upon us, you would see us obeying your word, obeying your commandments, obeying your precepts, 
obeying your statutes, doing those things which are within our power to do, within our assignment. And we do not burden ourselves with those things, Father, that were assigned to others, that were not written to us, nor would have applied to us now nor thousands of years ago. But instead, we focus on those things which do apply to us, that do pertain to our life, and that do order our steps. And we thank you that you give us the wisdom to discern the difference. We thank you for it. In Mashiach, Yahusha, and the people said, Amen. 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 And as the springtime continues on, we move closer to Shavuot. We're now uh, coming into that time period. We're going to be uh, celebrating here soon. I'm so excited for all of you that are going through the feast for the first time and on correct time. Uh, I'm so thankful for every one of you that are with us and that are standing in faith, believing Elohim and believing his word that as he speaks, we would hear. And I would encourage you and, and caution you concerning those voices that are trying desperately to get your attention, who themselves are not submitted, who themselves are not obedient, who themselves are not honoring Yahuwah, who are in violation of those commandments we went through, and don't even repent. So brethren, these things are shown to you so that you will see the difference and then you will act accordingly. Be very careful because remember the first warning Mashiach gave was take heed lest any man deceive you. Amen. So this is why we double check everything. The wise according to the scripture are they who check things. Who double check things. The simple move on and they are destroyed. The wise double and triple check. Good for you. Those of you who are scripture checkers, fact checkers, historical checkers, people who look things up. I'm proud of every one of you, and I'm grateful for you. Each and every one, you are a blessing to my heart. I want to encourage you again not to forget to join us tomorrow night. It should be a blessed time as we sit with our brother, Jarael Toma, to talk about freedom, to talk about your liberty in Mashiach, Yahusha, and know it will be a blessed time. Yes, amen. Amen and amen. Well, that's it for today. I pray that this message has been an encouragement to you and a blessing to you. I pray it's blessed all of my little friends out there, my little half pints, little short dudes, my amazing ones and wonderful ones and um, that, are, that are scattered all over the world, really. And we're thankful for every one of you. We are praying for you, for your protection, for your perseverance, for your prudence, wisdom, and understanding for courage, for your provision to be secure. These are our daily prayers for you. And so it's our expectation to hear good reports and good testimonies from every member and every part of this house throughout the earth. Well, that's it for today. I, I, I think I'm all done, Mama. <laughs> all right, well, have a good Shabbat, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is King of Kings. Band of milk and band of honey of blessing and land of curse then that's in our hearts so dearly so far will sound and we will go Our will sound
and we will go home.